Hello and welcome to another episode of the Transportation Exchange Podcast presented by Rush Trucks in Canada. I'm your host, Jason Kuyper. On today's episode, we're excited to welcome Eric Eldridge, VP Integrated Technology Sales with Navistar. Eric, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for inviting me. So we wanted to have you on in a timely fashion as Navistar has just uh, made a significant announcement last month with regards to a brand new integrated powertrain. Um, we thought we'd get you on to kind of give us the high level and maybe you know give us the, the back history of how this came about and, and what, what people can expect going forward. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's actually a longer story than people think. Uh, we, uh, Trayton, uh, purchased 17% of Navistar back in uh, 2016, and Trayton is a subsidiary of Volkswagen. And uh, back in 2017, uh, Scania, Navistar, man started a joint uh, project to design a global integrated powertrain from the ground up. And uh, Trayton uh, completed their acquisition of Navistar back in July of 21, and uh, Scania started production in Sadatelia, Sweden uh, this past March. Navistar will start uh, end of next year, and then MAN will begin production in 2025. So That's interesting. Yeah, I think, yeah, because, you know, with, with, with Rush, we're obviously a Navistar dealer, and you only hear kind of the launch of the engine. I, I honestly didn't really even connect the dots that there's obviously other companies tied into kind of what you, what's going on here. It is. And, you know, now is a time where uh, all the companies are, are really leveraging those global capabilities. And uh, we're sharing stories. And this will be a global integrated powertrain uh, built in uh, Sweden, Huntsville, Alabama. Mm-hmm. Sao Paulo, Brazil, and in Munich, Germany. So it's a uh, wow. pretty exciting time. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's definitely definitely a global platform with, with all those different locations. So with regards to what's involved and what people can expect to see, I guess maybe start us off with, you know, I guess the heart of it all, which is traditionally the engine. What uh, what's, what's new in this engine? Yeah, so um, this will be the first uh, product built for North America from Trayton, and uh, it's pretty interesting because the 13-liter engine and the 14-speed transmission, along with the dual-stage after-treatment, were really developed concurrently to ensure that we maximize ca- uh, compatibility and integration between all systems, which is which is re- a really po- important point here because uh, they all of these uh, components depend on each other. And as I as we go through this uh, this podcast, you'll start to see the different pieces coming together, and it's it's pretty interesting. And that's that's the exciting thing about uh, international having an integrated uh, powertrain is that it's all ours, and and now we have these three components. And you know, when we start off with the S13 engine, it's really all about our clean burn combustion cycle to deliver power and savings. That's by using less fuel in a more efficient way. But not only that, but it still uh, helps us meet our demands on reducing the carbon footprint, which really uh, people ask, well, why are we introducing a uh, diesel combustion engine uh, when everybody else is working on electrification, which we are too. So this is going to fill the gap there. (laughs) Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, you got heavier EPA coming down in the next couple of years. So, I mean, the time is kind of right to, you know, be getting in front of it and, and it's starting to meet that guidelines. Like you said, there is electric coming and, you know, we do have a footprint in there as well, but you still, the bulk of the fleets are still running diesel and you need something that is clean and efficient and, and uses less fuel. Yes. So from a, uh, you know, general spec point of view, I mean, you're looking at, you know, horsepower torque rating. What are we looking at in, in this engine? Yeah, so uh, this uh, this engine has been simplified. Uh, in our previous model, we had seventeen engine ratings. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and uh, we 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 only have seven here. Uh, Three hundred and seventy horsepower to five fifteen. Um, we've simplified things, which is a, a major piece of of why this this global integrated powertrain is uh, is going to be successful. And uh, simplification is uh, is a major part of that. 
Yeah. And speaking of simple, from what I understand, you know, from the launches and everything that's, that's been out in the press, you've made some changes even to the, uh, the turbo setup versus kind of what was been used in the past and what we traditionally see in, in engines. Yeah, we have. And, and, and to explain that, we really have to kind of back up a little bit. And, and what I mean by that is uh, when we look at our, our design philosophy here, uh, this is uh, based on our SCR technology. And uh, for when we start with our engine, we have a dual overhead cam engine that is really more efficient breathing is what we were after there with our dual overhead cam. And we couple that with our 23 to 1 compression ratio and our refined injectors. That secures a very thorough and complete usage of the energy and the fuel in the cylinder, which is really critical for this in our SCR technology. Because with those high temperatures at the top of the compression stroke, less particulate matter is produced. Hmm. So this leads to, to your question uh, because. Um, the other thing that we've done here is that we've eliminated cooled EGR. Right. And since we've done that, we, uh, we do not have an EGR cooler. So we've lost some weight and some extra expense. And uh, now uh, when we're talking about our turbo, since we are not directing uh, 20% of that cooled EGR back into the combustion process, we, ha- we now have 100% of the uh, exhaust flow through the turbo during our normal operations. That gives us that higher flow and boost. Mm-hmm. And uh, right now, we don't need a variable geometry turbo. That's how we get, uh, um, that's why we went uh, with the fixed geometry turbo, which really allows, uh, it's, a, it's a simpler design. Gotcha. It's neat. I mean, the technology is, it's, to me, it's still stunning. Like the amount of things going on in that engine that obviously you don't see, but little tweaks like that, which are, aren't little and they make significant changes in, you know, the overall design and, and function of the engine. So it's pretty Correct. Impressive. Very cool. Um, I guess a new piece, you know, for us to be seen, you know, traditionally we're using third party, you know, uh, after treatment systems. Now we, again, part of the integrated is pulling it in house, maybe kind of walk us through what's a little bit different from what people are used to seeing, you know, in international products, as far as the after treatment system. Uh, we're utilizing our SCR technology and it's fair to say that the dual stage after treatment is the single most important reason behind our leading fuel savings. We will improve our fuel economy by 15% over the first generation A26. And really, this has just moved the limits for how a thorough and modern, clean, sustainable truck engine can be allowed to operate without sacrificing compliance to federal emissions. And how we get this done is the first dose of DEF is introduced right outside the turbo outlet at the highest temperature where it's more effective in reducing NOx. Then the second dose is introduced inside the after treatment container itself. And really since cooled EGR has been eliminated from the combustion cycle, much less soot in particular matter is generated. And this allows for an extended DPF ash cleaning and maintenance and eliminates the needs for active regions and your drivers are just absolutely going to love this. And it's a fuel saver. Agreed. The, the, especially the, the region. I know when the technology first came out initially, that was the big stumbling block for a lot of drivers is getting used to, you know, trucks derating because it needs to be, you know, the regen needs to be done. And you just park regen because they've blown through all the active regens for all the codes. So yeah, eliminating that in their day-to-day life going forward, I think will be a, a huge welcome. And also just for, from fleet owners, just, just the uptime is huge. No, that, that's, that's uh, absolutely right. And then, you know, since we're, you know, in normal operation, since the after treatment operates in passive regeneration, uh, for this reason, we were also able to eliminate the diesel oxidation catalyst and fuel dosing. And it's just, uh, it's just another part we eliminated and another fuel saver. And then, you know, the service in from what I read, you know, in the press and heard is, the, the service interval is also extended as well, which again, eliminating downtime, you know, more uptime 
trucks not in a shop as much getting service done for you know this type of technology yeah that's correct and then, so the big one i guess that's new or newer for me wrap my head around is you know the integrated transmission you know that's uh it's pretty exciting to see you know a different transmission come to market traditionally we've always had two options to, to pick from from the dealer side um so this is this is a third, but also it's in house, which is interesting. So maybe walk us through what's what's involved with the T fourteen transmission. Yeah, so this uh, this is an all new transmission from the ground up. It's it's designed to be a fully automated mechanical gearbox, uh, fourteen speed overdrive, uh, optimized to deliver peak fuel economy in the thirteenth gear. So. Um, you know, some other things uh, about this transmission, there's an unlimited GCW rating. It's really 242,000 th- 242, pounds. I don't think many wow. people are going to get up there. <laughs> yeah. No, that's impressive <laughs> though. But uh, there's many reasons of why we can do that. And, uh, and I'll go over those uh, here in a minute. But, you know, we, what we've really focused on is with this uh, 14 speed transmission is that we have a why a, a very wide range of transmission ratios and that really delivers a better driving experience i mean anybody that drives this truck uh, one of the first things they they notice is just how smooth and and flawlessly and effortlessly it, it shifts and um you know we have a, a couple of extra crawler gears to get us going our startability and great ability here in fuel economy or or really uh have been producing just great results for us. Excellent. So when you talk about, you threw it out there, the unlimited or, you know, technically not unlimited, but no one's going to touch that, that GCW kind of, how, how do you get to that? That's, that's definitely impressive to see. Well, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of things that we we've done uh, just to, to improve the uh, durability and reliability of this transmission. And, and, and one of those strategy moves that we made, uh, during uh, in the past five years, as we're thinking about things that uh, that we can do uh, to accomplish our goals, is we made the uh, oil cooler standard on this transmission, and uh, the European team calls it a heat exchanger. But what's so important about that is that when you start up in Minneapolis in the winter, and you what it does is is, is it brings the transmission fluid to operating temperature quicker. Gotcha. But then when you're out in the desert and you're, <laughs> you're uh, in Arizona, uh, it brings the temperature down to protect the internal parts from excessive wear. So, you know, not only that, but this this helps uh, reduce parasitic losses that we can maintain that uh, that constant temperature. But the other thing that that we've done and what's very interesting in this transmission is that There's an internal pump inside the transmission that brings the oil to the top of the case where it's stored in an upper reservoir and sprayed on the gear on the gears when and where it's needed. And Mm. the transmission controller uh, control module uh, basically leads this and and decides when uh, that reservoir needs to be filled and empty. And uh, it's just another reason that we reduce the, the parasitic losses and we're improving our durability in that transmission. It's uh, something that we're very excited about. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I don't think transmissions get all the love as the engines usually do, but there's a fair amount of technology going in, you know, to, to what you guys have done with, with this one. It's, it's pretty neat to, to see the underworkings that, you know, you don't normally see, right? You, most guys are only ever just put it into drive nowadays and walk away. You don't think about kind of what's actually making it all happen behind the scenes. That's right. So I guess the value of all these three together is the power of integration, right? The, the, the power of having an in-house solution from start to finish. Um, maybe walk us why, walk us, sorry, walk us through, you know, why that was kind of important from a Navistar and, you know, Trey Tom point of view, but you know, what's the benefit now, you know, to the end user of having all this kind of integrated through, through one, through one OEM. Well, I mean, obviously now what we have is a one-stop shop and uh, you know, we have uh, over 700 dealer locations, 300 at Love's. And, you know, that, that, that's one thing that, uh, that, that we have been doing to ensure that we have a flawless launch is that we've been working hand in hand with our dealer council 
uh, for over a, a year now, and we still have a year to launch just to ensure that happens. And sales service parts, used truck, dealer operation, connected technology. I and mean, we have these committees going and and uh, we're working hand in hand to make sure that uh, the customer uh, is, uh, you know, that we can deliver that that top customer experience. And, you know, some of the other things that uh, that go into this power of integration. And, you know, I, when I talked about that heat exchanger in the past, we probably wouldn't be able to get that done without having an integrated powertrain. Right. Uh, the other the other part of this that that um, that uh, I haven't talked about yet is that uh, the engine and the transmission communicate on a proprietary CAN network that's separate from the J19 public uh, communication um, link. And that really helps our engine and our transmission. There's no interference going on. So that uh, proprietary software and that communication process with this integrated powertrain really allows us to to reach our fuel economy goals and improve uh, those shipping patterns. So it's, it's, it's pretty exciting. Well, thanks again. There's definitely lots to look forward to. And I know from the dealership level, uh, lots to talk about, and we're looking forward to the demos coming out in, you know, early 2023. So the customers come take a look at the technology and look forward to what's coming out in 24. Hey, Jason. Hey, thank you. Take care. That does conclude today's episode. I want to thank Eric from Navistar for joining us. And to catch up on past episodes, check out the transportationexchangepodcast.ca. And until next time, thanks for listening.